Hello everyone and welcome to tonight's episode of Great Train Layouts Live. I'm your host, Dick Ozrak. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being patient if you're watching live and we're a little late starting. But I figured this time I would start and make sure that the audio actually worked because if you've watched the show before, you know sometimes uh, I have a habit of going on great uh, lengths about what we're going to embark on today only to... Um, not have working audio, but I can see the levels. I can see the levels and I know they are working. So it's great to have you joining us today. And what are we building today? Well, we are building an interurban layout. That's right. We're doing HO scale. This is the Valley City Street and interurban layout. It's a track plan from, well, I originally saw it in 101. Great track plans by Model Railroader magazine. Uh, I've seen it published elsewhere in some other um, different uh, smaller publications. There's actually a PDF online that I probably should have linked to in the description. But if you search Valley City Street and into Urban, maybe put quotes around it to make sure you're searching the correct thing. You should actually be able to find this plan online pretty easily. This is a shelf layout designed HO scale for a five by seven room. We're going to cheat. We're going to make that room a little bigger just for play value. But a lot of the core principles of the layout are remaining the same. The only reason we're cheating here is just because that gives us the ability to make it a loop de loop de. Hello, Virtual Railroad Academy. Hello, White Star. Thank you for joining us tonight. So, um, this was a plan that stood out to me. I, I mean, I'll admit it wasn't one that in the context of reading a bunch of plans that I, I thought much of, but then I read an article in one of these online sources where it actually, the designer talked about the mentality of building this and how the Valley City Street and in Interurban was a real interurban railway in North Dakota, Valley City, North Dakota. In fact, it was only 1.2 miles long. So it's one of those rare railroads, rare railroads. Yeah, I got that right the first time, uh, where you could actually probably fit, especially if you did end scout, you could fit every single mile for mile and get the whole thing in there. Uh, and this plan, having looked at uh, maps and read an article um, about the prototype, um, this seemed like something worth uh, trying out. Uh, interurbans, I think, often go... Uh, undermodeled in general, uh, largely probably because of the challenge of doing catenary. And I, I certainly get that, but here in the train sim, we don't have to worry. <laughs> well, we do have to worry about laying catenary. We are going to be doing that, but we're going to explore why it's kind of worth it. Um, and the operation potential of this layout, whether you were to do it um, in the electric era or the diesel era. We'll talk more about the prototype as we go on. But first, thank you guys for tuning in to tonight's stream presented by Jointed Rail. Play with the best. You can check out all of their wonderful add-ons at jointedrail.com. So uh, first, a quick look at the plan before we get to track lane. Uh, you can kind of tell the edits that I've made. So originally as a 5x7, this section on the left... Uh, I'm not seeing my cursor, so I'm going to change the setting on that. But the section on the left where it looks like I kind of took a piece and moved it, uh, that's exactly what I did. Um, that is exactly what I did there. And the reason that I did that is because pushing that out allows me to be able to turn this into a full loop. Uh, I'm not sure that you're seeing the cursor yet. You're seeing where the cursor's been. How do I just change that property? Well, oh, challenge of changing these things on the fly. Apologies if the cursor doesn't appear. Um, change that there too, except that's my webcam. All right, but um, yes, let's get to some track lane, shall we? So uh, we're gonna bring up our. I've created a pick list. This is my uh, paint palette, if you will, of different assets that I think we're going to be using a lot of tonight. Um, so, yeah, the basics of the plan. This is a point-to-point, -point as originally envisioned, where you have two interchanges. You've got the Sioux Line interchange on the north, which connects here at North Valley City. 
Uh, oh, now I see my cursor. Great. And then this red line, that's all the electric lines. That is the VCS and I. And then it interchanges on the south with the Northern Pacific. Their interchanges here. So we're going to be... One of the things I don't quite get with this plan, why they made the interchanges separate. I mean, you might as well just connect them as a single piece of track, even though they are technically two different railroads. We're definitely going to be connecting them. We're going to probably also cheat and maybe even build in a few tracks in there. Because again, we could do that. But it doesn't take away from the core. You could work this as just one train per track and it would still be perfectly robust. So with that said, let's get to it. So track lane and train Z, uh, we're going to have to do our track and our trolley wire as separate entities. We don't get to do them together. Um, the, I wish it was more streamlined than that, but we'll make do. Um, while building this, I encourage you to chime in with your comments, questions. It's so good to be back with you guys tonight. I know it's been a while since we last did one of these streams, so I appreciate you tuning in and your patience. Obviously, the summertime is a busy time for a lot of us have been in and out of town a great deal on vacation and uh, jobs for Streamliner Media. So it's been a, a good summer and I hope you guys have been enjoying your summers as well and please uh, drop a comment with uh, what you've been up to, any exciting vacations, train destinations, anything of that sort. So... And I will confess, uh, this is my first time doing any extensive route building in a few months. Because as you know, last time on the show, we were mainly doing, um, uh, what were we? We were on the Tumblr Ridge sub subdivision designing or looking at an actual route and sort of planning what a train layout version of that route would look like. Yeah, I think we're going to stick with that. Um, so it's been a few months since I've, I've done serious train Z route building, but I figured it's time to come back. I have been messing around with some elements of train Z, but that's going to be a surprise for later. Um, I'm pretty excited about this tonight's surprise. You know me, I love having my surprises for you guys. So tonight's no exception to that. I, I've got something good for you. Um, especially if you're used to train Z, um... I want to give a spoiler, but I'm probably going to be too obvious with it if I do. So, um, the Valley City Street and Interurban, real interurban Valley City, North Dakota, built uh, as a connection between the Sioux Line to the north and the Northern Pacific to the south. It uh, existed until 53, at which point it was bought out by the Sioux because it was in very bad shape. Um... And the Sioux Line ran it for a number of years. I forget when it was finally completely abandoned. Uh, you can see remnants of it if you look on Google Maps. Um, you can kind of tell where it was in the yard and so forth. Uh, a lot of what I learned about it and what also informed this original track plan that I'm basing it off of was an article in... The Sioux Line Historical Society has a publication. So from 1984, they ran a special um, uh, issue on, or they, a special article on the VCS and I. And it's a goldmine of information. It talks about the history of it, why it was built. There's drawings of the trolleys in there. And. This isn't so much a s s surprise, so I'm going to tell you, yes, I, I'm pleased to say that we do have the actual interurbans to play with. I'll give you a sneak peek at them. These, uh, so there were technical drawings in that article, so I sent those drawings to Mr. P. Weiser, who's a train Z content creator. I said, could you please make these for, for train Z? 
and uh, bless his heart, he did. So the two pieces of equipment we've got, we've got a nice combine and our urban coach here. And we've got this very interesting funky freight motor. So that's stuff that we're going to be playing with at the 9 o'clock or the two-thirds mark of this stream. Once we have some track down, we get to have some play time with the trains. We've got the actual interurban equipment, and that's going to be so much fun to play with. Uh, looking briefly at some of your comments, a railroad guy uh, went to the Reading Northern for the Iron Horse Rambles. Glad that you enjoyed it. Looked absolutely insane. And both insanely cool and just plain insane. But I'm glad you had fun. Uh, David Mitchell, my birthday is today. Happy birthday, David. Uh, and Reverend Guy's birthday was the 19th. Very nice. Uh, VRA, it's been such a busy summer working for the Reverend Vacations. Yada, yada, yada. I, I understand. And the Millennial Modeler says, Greetings from the Tuscawaras Railroad. Glad to see one of these streams on again. Hope well as well. All is very well, especially tonight. Because we've got a nice... In a way, I'm kind of glad that this is tonight's stream because it's going to be a little tricky with, with the trolley wire. Not terribly. But there's no grades. This is all flat. And I'm kind of in the mood for something just... Simple. No no funky grades or earthworks or anything like that. This is just we're plunking down our tracks and we're going. And and that that sounds like a good evening to me. I, I'm I'm I like easy. Easy once in a while easy is the way to go. And it's good to it's good to be here with you guys and it's good to be back in the sim is uh there's a, there's a comfort of being back in the in the sim. Been doing a lot of other gaming and a lot of other adventures, but good to uh, good to kick back and enjoy life. Um, do I want to make that a curve? I kind of do actually. Uh, yeah. Let's see if we make that a full curve. If that'll work. Yeah. I mean. The good thing is this is an urban track. If it's a little funky, we could get away with that. Because you, the photos of the VS, VCS and I, um, maybe I'll show you some of them. I, I, I try to be careful about image copyright, but this is a 1984 article from uh, the Sioux Lines publication. I couldn't even find it. I had to ask for it in one of the Facebook groups. Uh, oh, no, actually, I do want that track. Uh, so it's not like anybody's going to be really remiss if I show a few photos, right? A few photos just to kind of contextualize what we're doing here. In a way, I'm kind of glad that this is obscure because I think one of the challenges that comes with modeling a known entity is just the fact that then there's the pressure. If you're, if you're a persnickety modeler, if you, if you really are the type of person that says, I want to get all the details right. Then the bad thing of having the knowledge of what the details are or were is that it adds that pressure to say, this has to be really good. This has to be perfect. This has to include this and this and this because the photo showed that this was here in this year and so forth. But, uh, there's, it's probably, sometimes it's nice to say, I don't have an answer to that because then, I mean, nobody's going to look at this layout and say, oh, you didn't do this thing correct or that thing correct because, I mean, how many people have even heard of this railroad? I would not have heard of this railroad. And I consider myself a very huge fan of interurban railroads. Uh, and I would have never heard of this railroad if it weren't for this track plan. So, in a way, then it then there's that relief of, I don't have to have everything perfect. Nobody's going to be looking at it and saying, oh, you didn't include this detail or that detail. There is a really nice showstopper. Uh, this, even as simple as this layout is, there's a really good showstopper scene that we're going to be getting to. Uh, and that's probably going to be the last thing track-wise and the first thing scenery-wise, and, and you'll see why. It's not even that hard, and I think it's one of those things that You'll see it and you'll think, this is a great layout element, even if I were... I'm not saying every layout needs this 
thing, but that it's a really cool trick. And it's not ex it's not even a, a trick in the sense that it's it's fake. It's based on what's really or what was really there. Ah, uh, I don't I didn't quite get the frogs, did I? Take that clip out of context and see how it plays. I didn't quite get the frogs. Uh, something looks off there. Oh, because this wants to be straight. Uh, okay, I'm going to redo that switch. This is where we have to kind of use the lines as a guide, but not trying to get every line absolutely perfect because, because that's just not going to be... Feasible. I don't get the impression this is a layout that was ever actually constructed. The My impression of the design is it's one where the author said, oh, this is a cool prototype, let me make a plan based on that. And did, but then it, it didn't... I don't think he intended to turn it into a layout. At least I, there's no indication in any of the searches that I did that it became a layout. You guys helped to select this as uh, an item when I ran the poll uh, a couple months ago as far as what you'd like to see on the show. This was one of the options. You voted Tumblr Ridge as your number one, so we did that back in June. And uh, number two was Interurban. And so that's what we're doing today. We've got some light rail. Obviously, this is a detail that's specific to the sim. It's somewhat relevant if you were doing this in HO. This would be code 70 rail as opposed to your code 83, which is, or maybe even code 55. You might want to go really low profile on this. Um, but that's what we're doing here. This is interurban. It's super light rail. They did not have much of a maintenance budget at all. So that is reflected in the nature of the track that we are using for today's little experiment. I have a feeling we're going to extend this out further because it this runaround so this runaround is going to be for interchange i think it just needs to be a little bit bigger because otherwise we're just not going to have quite enough room to i think as long as we can get around three cars we'll be okay get around three cars and be able to fit an engine on the end that's really the extent of it. Plus, having headroom to be able to move those cars in and out of the interchange track here. This is our trolley line. Uh, with a little bit of the non-electrified stuff in here for good measure. The last bit to add um, for... Uh, I want to add that next. Okay, so that is our uh, branch line. Uh, branch line. Well, it is kind of a branch line. It's technically its own company. We're going to go main line now. We're going to add, uh, I think 112 pound rail. 132 feels a little overkill. Uh, tan ballast, rusty. No, just, I'd say gray ballast. No, I want to keep it tan ballast. Uh, tan ballast, but no rust. Maybe we'll go 100 pound just because I'm not seeing the 112. Oh, there's the 112. Okay. So now let's do main lines. This is the Northern Pacific side. So in the original plan, the track stops right here because this is your doorway. So the door is able to swing in. You, you've got this kind of square where the door swings in. You wouldn't have this curve or that piece of straight. It All of this would be up here, so it'd be just ending there. Uh, the advantage is that, hey, being able to fit uh, a layout in a five, a, a, a shelf layout around the edges in a 5 by 7 room, that's impressive. The con is that you can't have trains just going around in circles uh, or just passing through. So it's kind of... We're, we're extending it, and I think the dimensions to this come something like uh, 7 by 6? I forget what we extended it to. I think we extended it only by a foot or so. It, it doesn't, by any means, I mean, it changes the nature of if it would fit a 7 by 5 room, of course. But 
the reality being is that you've you've probably got at least a little bit more space it's not a great leap of faith to say hey now we have the room to do this a little bit more uh this is a siding i should probably do it as code 70 so i'm going to redo that section there as code 70 it's we'll get that hooked into the main line these are, as you can see from the black line, this is a siding that'd be served by the Northern Pacific. So one of our takeaways from this plan already is this idea that your centerpiece railroad, so let's say that your railroad is a bridge line of some kind and it's going between two. If there's a little bit of switching that can be done at either end by your other companies or just that are isolated to what's coming in and out of staging, Gives a little bit more operational variety. I guess we'll make that switch 112. That looks better. Okay. Um, and that's something we have here. So with the Northern Pacific, you've got Russell Miller Milling Company. That also an interesting name. Um, that would be worked by the, the Northern Pacific. The interchange is technically over here. So the NP brings cars into the scene over here and they also work this gravel pit the the article went into some detail about why that was search me as but just goes to show that it's worth documenting these things while they're around and while one has the ability to ask these questions because I mean, it's some of these railroads that we can find ourselves trying to learn more about can be so obscure that it can be really challenging after the fact, especially a hundred years later to say, okay, now why did they do that that way? Is there a reason? And there probably was a reason, but might be lost to the annals of time. Kevin Seibert, hey, glad that you could join us here tonight. If you enjoy Great Train Layouts Live, uh, the Roundhouse Podcast, What Makes This Layout Great, any of these shows, I uh, would greatly appreciate you checking out patreon.com slash the roundhouse for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, you're getting uh, the ability to have your name in the credits of What Makes This Layout Great. Um you get a shout out on the podcast when you subscribe. And I'm just very appreciative of the financial support to be able to pursue shows like this. Um, but even just if, if you don't have any money, that is entirely understandable. Uh, just making people aware of these shows, if you find them entertaining, sharing them through your social media channels, that's greatly appreciated. Okay. So we've got our main line coming in now. And so we're doing, I don't know if I'd say we're cheating, but we are, I mean, modeling wise, we are kind of cheating in the sense that we've got, you're going to have the Northern Pacific occasionally rolling through Sioux line and vice versa. I don't there's not really a good way around that. If you had a lot more room, you could probably have this line peel off into its separate staging. This line peel off to its separate staging. Is that worth it here? No. That, that We don't need to get into that level of comp complexity. Um, and that's the beauty of these designs, is you kind of, you figure out what are things that I can live with that might be slightly inaccurate. What are things that are really going to bother me? And my preference in general is to have some form of continuous running somewhere in a in a design because there's times when you are just not going to want to have to be switching cars out and starting and stopping there's times when you just want to sit and watch the train go and this now enables that now with the electric it technically is still point to point. It, to make it circuitous, you'd have to do a lot. Because essentially you would have to take this 
and extend the wires to under the northern or to overhead the northern Pacific and overhead the Sioux or have a switch peel off there. That would matter if you powered your inner urbans with the overhead wire. For me, if I was building this, I think I could probably live with a section being unwired and just watching the trolley pole dancing in midair. Uh, so I think we're going to pull this track back a little bit more. That's going to give us more room for this lumber mill scene here rather than pinching it too much in that corner. So I think that is almost everything track wise. Uh, our staging area, I'm going to just turn it into a loop for now. Eventually, I'm probably off camera going to make this a multi-track yard. But, for the time being, for tonight's play session, we're just going to make it a loop. Going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to finish up the track, and then I've got our first big scene. Stay tuned. And we're back. Time to wrap this puppy up. Or at least wrap up the main line. We're just going to add this little bit in here. And now we have our completed main line loop. Serving as both the Sioux line to the north and the northern Pacific to the south. And we've got all of our interurban track in place. Now let's move on to the first big scene. And you're thinking, well, Nick, how could you possibly have that big of a big scene? I mean, this seems like, yes, it's a nice layout, but it's all flat. And where, where is this big scene that you speak of? Well, I'll show you where this big scene is that I speak of. This big scene is right over here. Uh, so, the uh, Northern Pacific, at, initially when it built through Valley City, it built through the city. This is the low line. Or, well, the original main line, which later became the low line because then they built a bypass with this huge, gigantic viaduct, which 
Uh, at some point, I will put a picture on screen and, and from the article, and then you'll actually be able to see what that viaduct looked like. So we're going to have that viaduct here because it's cool. Uh, and I think it's about... Oh, not that. I think it's a... It's a pretty tall guy, so we're gonna make it eh, about that tall. Yeah, that seems about right. And we're gonna stretch it so the the towers fall between the rails. So this is what I meant by being able to do something that's big, uh, but not complicated, because it. I won't say it doesn't matter what you're modeling. But pretty much no matter what your layout looks like, it'd be very easy to have a bridge just cutting across and representing another railroad. And in this case, this high trestle is prototypical uh, to what the VCS and I ran under. Now, you could look at it and say, well, I don't know about this, Nick. It, it seems kind of odd just having like this fragment of it there. And if you wanted to remove it, I wouldn't blame you. I like it, so I'm keeping it. Uh, we'll probably, if we end up putting it on the background and screen, we'll, we'll play around with how that meshes with the background. I'm not quite sure on that. Um, so yeah, if that bothers you looking down, then, you know, you could have just omit that. But I think this is such a cool detail. And it gives it some nice verticality, especially since... The entirety of this layout is flat. So, scenery-wise, let's continue our work here on the north end. So this is North Valley. Oh, I did forget a little itty-bitty bit of track, but that won't take that long to get in there. This is uh, the Sioux's um, connection to a grain elevator. I want to say that's a grain elevator, and that's a coal depot. And those are industries that are worked by the Sioux specifically. So let us first get... Hmm, this is going to be interesting. Um, I want to straighten that. I want to get this. I want to use it like so. Make that a straight section. And we're going to connect that here. And we're going to connect... We're going to turn that into this. And then we're going to connect it there. And then we'll play around with that straight section to get it to where we want. As you can see, this is a layout of very, very tight curves. Now, if you had more room, you might space your, your main line out a little bit more so that the curves aren't quite as tight. But that said, this isn't interurban. You're going to be running equipment that is designed for axle equipment designed for tight turns. So, and freight cars so you don't really need those wide curves now you might want them for the main line but this is a train sim so we're gonna just assume that our equipment can fit around these curves because in the sim it can in real life it might not always check your curves uh especially if you have some nice uh passenger cars well we're gonna add a switch here and then we're gonna put that about there and again uh just making sure that can hopefully go around yeah, that'll work i mean that's a tight switch but that'll work for our our needs david mitchell i'm going to do a shout out later on my video blog on my youtube channel for you i thank you very much i appreciate that david okay now we've got this track in and we can straighten that section out so now scenery time let's get our station in place this uh i like this station but it is going to require us to um, i'm gonna have to oh i know what i thought of uh i thought of realigning the track down a little further or do i still want to do that uh or was this the station that i put there uh let me see Mm, no, I think that was the. I 
think this was the... Yeah, I was going to use this station for there. I put this uh, together a while ago, so I have to remind myself, what was I thinking? Always an interesting question. I really like this, though. The The real Sioux station was painted red like this model, so I do want to get this in here somehow. And this is a challenge I think a lot of us face when we're designing our, our layouts is, oh, I, I have this building kit. I really want this kit to fit in. And yeah, you could kit bash, you could scratch build, but sometimes it's just, I, I just want this to fit. Um, now, we could throw it on the other side of the track. That's not prototypical, but we could. Uh, let's see, and the water tank goes here. Well, I think we're going to want, yeah, we're going to need a little bit of room anyway. So I think... We are going to do a compromise, and that compromise is we are going to take this track here. Actually, both of the... And we're going to take this straight. Uh, we're going to get rid of the connecting splines. We're going to simplify it into a single straight, and I think I want to take it at an angle. Makes it kind of more of a, a junction. Uh, and then we'll delete that, and we'll delete that. So if we put that here, now we have room to put our station. And we are cheating. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with cheating today. It's not cheating. We're designing it the way we want. We're, we're finessing. Complete with the hand gesture. We're finessing. <laughs> but I liked how that looks. It gives us a, a wee bit more room to work with. It just doesn't... Things don't feel quite as cramped as they did. So I want to have this square with the Sioux because they would have been the primary. Um, Actually, maybe what we'll do is we'll kind of S-curve it. So we'll have this section... We'll move this section out of the way for the time being. So we'll kind of have it S-curve in. And then it could be... Ah, I like that. Uh, I like that. And then what we'll do is... So we'll move the station a little farther down. And the water tower too. Because water tower is obviously not servicing the enter urban so we'll put the water tower so it's about there we'll put the station so it's about here that is going to give us a little bit more room for that inner uh change track to come into play have a switch coming off there goes there so keep that straight yeah i like that and then we're gonna throw a switch off of here so that is our straight piece that'll be in the middle of the S-curves, which allows us to do a nicer switch. So this is our passing track. So we're still keeping the fundamentals the same as far as how this works. We're just changing the geometry a bit. That's a little wervy dervy I like it more like this. Yeah, I think that'll do. Yeah, and it's an urban. It does not have to be perfect alignments. Uh, this is going to go pretty... It's going to have to go up right to the edge there. Um, tad unrealistic, but I, I can live with that. Uh, we connect this here. That is too sharp. But I think we could get maybe three cars in there. I feel like three cars is a good amount to be able to interchange. Uh, to, to fit in there. Um, and operationally, who knows? I don't know. I'm not sure if the Sioux would have just left them on the interchange track here, in which case we have room for probably about two. I mean, it kind of depends on how you intend to run this. Because this is really, this is really a one person's type of design. It, one, maybe two. So you could have somebody running your mainline trains in and out of staging and one person running the uh the inner urban uh i don't think the inner urban lends itself to two even though technically you could have a passenger to freight i think your real estate it's just so tight it's like where do you pass those trains uh it 
only thing is if maybe your freight is working down here in Valley City and you have a passenger train going up to uh, North Valley City here. Something like that. Um, yeah, I I'm happy with the building placement here. Then for the north side here, we've got our grain elevator. You'll recognize this model from Kootenai Lake Navigation. This is courtesy of Ricomon. That is a nice building. Um, I just, yeah, wouldn't have to use this grain elevator model. But this is actually based on a real kit. I forget the manufacturer. Uh, you'd have to check out the stream that I did, the part one stream on the Kootenai Lake Navigation Company. Coal Shed, which has track with it, um, which allows me to make it an interactive industry. Which, sure, that's, that is not a complicated uh, track relaying, so we're going to do that. Hope you guys are enjoying the music tonight. Uh, you'll notice we, we've we've changed the mood since we're not doing um, uh, since we're not doing things set in the '80s or '90s uh, tonight. We are ergo um, we're taking it back with some jazz and some ragtime and. Uh, music that you would see in tapes about trolleys. I, I mean, if, if you're watching this, you probably have at least some interest in trolleys and inner urbans. Tell me you haven't heard music like this watching streetcar footage on YouTube or uh, at a relative's place. You've, you've heard this kind of music before, right? I mean, it's just... I feel like there's there's a genre of music called trolley music or streetcar music, and this is what I'm trying to make this playlist. But going more for early and urban vibes rather than, say, PCC era. Uh, because these guys had a very small roster. Uh, we're going to be playing with two-thirds of the entire roster tonight, as it were. There's Sioux. Uh, there's North Valley City. Our interchange with the Sioux. Yeah, we could probably get in there. And we'll add platform and details like that. But right now, just big building placement. That's our initial priority. Uh, and then we'll go and refine things in later uh, details-wise. But I, I like that. That's just... And we can turn off the, uh, the base maps. We can take a look at how that, that... I mean, that's a good scene. And this is something where... If you're intimidated by the idea of doing an urban, and like I don't blame you if you are, this could be a diesel era route. And actually, the real VCS and I was bought out by the Sioux, and so it was run with, say, GP9s. So this lends itself uh, to that. I mean, you could even do steam with a switcher as long as you don't need to be turning your power. Uh, but that's just an, it's a classic railroad scene, that is. Uh, you could, other ways of adapting it um, or modifying it. Uh, obviously, it could be expanded. You could have something going out this way if you had the room for it. It'd be kind of interesting. You have this track crossing, and then you have a junction over here of some kind. That, that could be neat to model uh, in some capacity. Just ideas for how you could take a plan and... Really make it your own if you want. You guys know me. I, I like <laughs> coloring in the lines. I'm very much a coloring in the lines kind of person when it comes to my route design efforts. I mean, I, it's already like, oh, this isn't exactly how it was. But it looks cool, so we're going with it. Uh, we've got this uh, this bridge here. Next up, uh, and this scene's going to look familiar because this is what I used for the thumbnail of the video. Um, we're going to have our stockyard. Um, we've got a couple of options. So we can do this, which is a spline object. Or we can do, uh, this, which is a full object. I'm not really so concerned about the fact that it spills out into the staging track, because we can always modify that later. In fact, we probably will. Um... I kind of like the looks of this. So, ignoring the, the physical characteristics, 
Uh, I kind of like this one more because it's got the sheep in there already and so forth. But to make the attract track work, it's going to spill over to that. So I think we'll just use this, uh, this spline version here. That's going to be our stockyard. And then we're going to have a factory right next to it of some description. Let's see what the factory is labeled at. Obviously, you can refine that later if we need to, to make sure it lines up. This is Miller Fiber Company. Uh, let's see if I picked out a specific building for that. Uh, I don't think I did. These are some other buildings I found recently where I'm like, that's cool. That's not a fiber company, though. Um, ah, that's coming up later. As is that. Well, um, let's see what we've got as far as factories. I, I want to put a small factory there. And as you guys know, building with Train Z, sometimes it's difficult to find small buildings because they can be very big. But let's see how we do. Uh, that's kind of big. I mean, it's small if we use just the end of it. If we just use this end because it's got the loading dock again yes it's spilling out in the track but that's staging that's essentially invisible to us once we put a backdrop I, I kind of like that for size I don't want it to dwarf the um I don't want it to dwarf the the stockyard either so I think that's good I, I like how that looks um and just to get a better sense let's put a uh, a wall there just give us a little bit of a, a teaser of if we're ignoring the staging. Um, uh, I think it must be one MR. Yes. Uh, yeah. Smaller backdrop. So if we're putting a backdrop that looks like this, there you go. There's your stock. Uh, and then we'll drag it down even further. See, now you've got just this little itty bitty bit of factory showing. We can probably we could create a fake base for it and a loading dock so that it's up to track level. But I think that's a good that's a good look. Um we'll leave that for the moment. What are you guys thinking so far of this? Uh, please want to eager to hear your feedback. Uh what do you think of this as a design? Um, do you have a favorite inner urban? Be sure to share your favorite inner urban in the comments. Uh, curious as to, because I feel like everybody's got an inner urban or a, a streetcar line that they have some sense of appreciation for. Honestly, inner urbans are where it's at. It's a shame that modeling them can be so challenging when it comes to finding models and worrying about catenary stuff like that because. Reality is, urbans are, there's so many, it's kind of like logging railroads. You can do pretty much whatever you want, and there was probably a prototype for it somewhere. You want your inner urban to interact with car ferries. I could think of two off the top of my head that did. You want your inner urban to do street running. Many of those did. You want your inner urban uh, to see steam service. There, there, there's prototypes for that. So, uh... We're giving some love tonight to the inner urban era. I like, oh, that, that went really well with the music. Tonight, we're giving some love to the inner urban era. Okay, moving on. We got our gravel pit here. This will be probably one of our few areas to actually do some landscaping. I think we'll probably do a little bit of landscaping around here as well. I want to get my buildings in before we do that, though. So let us move down to Valley City. Um, this is a freight platform, so we're going to have a crane, because that crane just looks cool. Do you have a crane in real life? I don't believe so, but it looks cool, and it's small, and it fits, so we've got a crane. We've got, uh, Curtis Solson and a VCS and I shed, those, um... Uh, let's see. I want to actually. I want to search KVR because I think I have some section houses that would look tool sheds. Yeah, 
Uh, there is a photo somewhere that shows what that actually looks like, but we're just going to go with, with this for the time being. Because it looks believable. Maybe put the stairs the other way. Looks believable. It's about the right size. Uh, there's a section house. That's a bit big for that, though. Um, you see these little rectangles that are right along the backdrop. That's basically suggesting that you'd have building fronts. Uh, we'll see if we get to that. Uh, that's a lower priority. My, I'm going to say the goal for tonight. I want the main buildings in place. I'd like to get it textured so it looks pretty and see how far we could get with the catenary. Again, we're trying to do this in an hour. So we'll see how it goes. We've got uh, over here our uh, lumber shed. And for that, we're going to do our small freight house. So that's going to go in here. We're going to line that up and then we'll get it to sync up with the track. Um, and what was the, there was a generic freight station model too. I think the generic freight station is going to be the, I forget if there's a, no, there's no industry here. At least I don't believe so. I'm going to check the original plan, the unaltered plan. Nope. That's just a passing siding. Uh, I don't know, wait. Uh, that's, the, that's still the cropped plan, so I have to go to the original document. Oh, okay, yeah. So we've got Smith Lundenberg Company, but no, there's no significance to that piece of track. So our ch options... So this was one building that I was thinking of for the lumber shed, but actually, I think I like this one more. And it fits a lot more easily in there. Yay for teeny tiny buildings that give us greater flexibility. With modeling. Not sure what the chairs are doing there, but it'll work in the context of what we want to do. Let's get some lumber piles stacked up just to have something uh, there that's saying, hey, this is a stack of lumber because this is a lumber mill. A little bit samey. So we'll bury the lumber piles up just so they don't all look too identical. These are maybe smaller than what we'd want to go for, but then again, this isn't a major carrier either, so I think we could kind of afford to go with smaller. I might find some other taller stacks. How do I feel about that? I mean, I like the texture more. But then it looks odd. Uh, lumber stacked. Uh, that looks better. Yeah. That looks a little bit more robust. Yeah, we'll go with that. Again, details. Want to make sure that we're getting... I want to leave you with a good sense. I feel like this is going to be a one and done stream. Like, as in... This is probably the one time I'm going to stream it. Then I'll work behind the scenes to actually get it done and share it with you once it's complete. Which, as you know, you go to greattrainlayouts.com. You can download uh, the layouts that uh, the layouts that I do on the live stream are either released or will be released. And so, uh, for example, the Conrail PNL Secondary that I was commissioned to build. Uh, by my friend Rudy uh, and Carolyn. Their layout is available for download, so go to greattrainlayouts.com and you can see uh, the live streams we did as well as download the route for yourself for Train Z19. Which is also a good time to point out that uh, I do take commission, so if you would like to see your layout designed on Great Train Layouts Live, have the benefit of audience input to see how it should look. Maybe you, you're you trying to figure out a track plan, or maybe you have a track plan, but you want to see the scenery before you start committing to building it. Either way, I'm here to help you out. You can reach out on greattrainlayouts.com. 
Uh, that'll do for the time being. That that works for me. Uh, the last section we've got, and then we're going to get into a little bit of scenery here because we've got this river scene. That's going to be kind of pretty. I suppose we'll have to do streets too. Yes. Um, I'm going to pull up my... So we've got a street down the center here, which is kind of hard to see because of how the exposure changed when we imported into the game. Um, JR, I think we're going to go with a JR Dirt Road for this because I want the roads to feel rough. I don't want them to feel super paved and polished. At least I think that's what I want. Yeah, that looks like what I want. Uh, so we've got a road there. We've got, uh, that, apparently that's 2nd Avenue. And then we've got, um, two more intersections. We've got one road here that's going to be, so Roosevelt here. Uh, and then there's a second road there, which is unlabeled. Uh, and then the city limit, which is right north of that road. So, let's see. I might end up paving one of those roads. But again, because I don't have to adhere to what's been done prototypically, I can kind of... If this would be in a city. It would be paved. Yeah, this one I... I want to pave this one. I want to leave this one dirt. I like the idea of having some variety. So we're going to change it to yarn. Uh, oh, actually, this one might be kind of nice. Yeah, I like that. And then we're going to have a road that parallels the backdrop uh, where the buildings come in. And looking at the track plan, that road basically goes right up to the freight dock and so forth. I think probably I'm going to have the road taper off and then it turns into dirt right before the freight dock. But Something along those lines. I might end up pushing the scenery backdrop a bit just to give room for that road. Because I do actually like that particular road texture. Bring this back to avoid the Z fighting. Um, and then, do I want to have another paved road here? I think I do. Hmm the city limit i think we could get away with the dirt road on that one and then maybe lower this a bit just to get it a to stop z fighting b to be close to the ground for when we do the um when we do the texture transition textures are going to be coming up next once we get basic roads and so forth in the game i don't think there's any roads on the north end of this plan no no roads going to North Valley City. There are definitely roads here in Valley City, and I think we are going to go with um, this style. I think we'll even go with... Do I want to go with sidewalked ones? I think so. It, it's interesting because I think that... You think of inner urbans and you typically think of them going right to the downtown and being where the biggest buildings are. But these storefronts are going to be, honestly, probably larger uh, than some of the buildings in this sort of industrial area. Like this is, I envision this is more commercial. Again, it is based off a real thing, but without having tons of photos of the prototype, I'm free to do what I want, and that's what we're going to do. Station building, we're going to go for this. Having a different color, it kind of differentiates it from the, the Sioux Line station. Yeah, I like that road. Definitely going to go with that. Um, the only, well, I want to go with it, except it could make that river seem kind of tricky because it doesn't have an embankment but if we use the road up to here and then we discontinue the sidewalk at the intersection with this road 
Oh, that's way too wide. Uh, this road has an embankment. So I like how that looks. And then this is the road that will parallel the embankment. And then it could actually... Oh, I like that. I like that a lot, as a matter of fact. There we go. Uh, now this is... Uh, oh yes, the Russell Miller Milling Company, which I have to assume is real. That name. Very creative otherwise. Let's go back to our factories and see what we come up with for this one. Uh, 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 or just type in factory into the search and it will filter results out. If you're new to this, uh, if you're new to a scene train or layouts being built in train Z, uh, one of the big reasons that I recommend it to people is because it does lend itself really well when it comes to being able to determine how a layout could look. And this is a prime example because you have so many uh, freeware assets that are out there as far as walls and buildings and textures. It makes it really easy to see what your creation is going to look like, even if you don't use the exact building. But just to say, this is kind of close whether in terms of the, the amount of stories. I like that building. Way too big for today. But I like that one. Um, so the ability to kind of get a, a sense of roughly what your layout's going to look like is what, what I call pre-visualization. The ability to pre-visualize in this sim is, is really strong. I like the building on the left a bit more, but it's a bit too tall i want this milling company to be understand in fact i almost want it to be a single story but i can live with it being two story i think that'll look okay let's um let's put some storefronts in place that's really going to help us to envision what we have going on here ah uh, yeah that's what i'm talking about although i think this one's too big but i like it it's too big for being able to fit a road there. Let's put it that way. Now, we don't have to fit a road there. That's part of the benefit of what we're doing. But I kind of want to... It's, again, maybe a bit too big and impressive. And if we break up... Oh, yeah, that could... Mm, if we break them up, then there's a little bit more separation, which I kind of like. And there's also another scene with which to look into the scene. If we, if you have all of this, because remember, this is technically a wall. This is supposed to be viewed from the inside of this donut. And so, if you fill this with buildings, then you're always looking over the buildings. But, if you keep that road there, then you have this nice opportunity to look between the buildings. And I do think that adds a lot when it comes to immersion. So, we're going to try that. I think we're going to even succeed at that. I don't like how modern that Sports R Us store is, but I do like it. Yeah, it's kind of glaring. I'm going to leave it there for the time being. I might even leave it for today and then come back to that. Because, yeah, I like these... Th this, again, a bit too big. Because I'm mindful of... I don't want the station to be overshadowed. This is not a gigantic structure of a station. It... It shouldn't be overshadowed. And it's always when you're designing a scene for any layout, you're thinking about what is the star of the scene? And then how am I... How what is, What's the main character and how am I supporting that main character visually? Uh, William D. Hey, Nick, I miss the At the Rail Yard series was excellent. Well, thanks for tuning in, William. Yeah, I... I do get that a lot, and I I never say never as far as doing product reviews without the rail yard, but for the time being, I'm really enjoying being able to do these layout builds, so maybe someday we will get back to doing uh, at the rail yard. 
I like a good creative challenge, and this this was a way to put doing this and what makes this layout great was a way of pushing myself creatively, making sure that I don't get too stale in my style. All of these are a bit too big. So I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. And maybe we'll change it later. And maybe we won't. But I like that. And then we can raise this section up. To go above the sidewalk ever so slightly. Well, except that then it's not going to line up with there. Technically, I should do a, a breakaway section. Uh, yeah, I should, but I think we could do that later. I really want to do some landscaping with you guys tonight, because mostly this thing has been flat, realistically so, but let's do some landscaping. First, though, we'll take a l stand back and take a look at what we've got so far. So, in the north, we have North Valley City, our interchange with the Sioux. Which, I'll admit, is probably my, my favorite section of the whole thing. Then we've got our... Uh, In-between, out-of-city limits, whatever you want to call them. Industries uh, with this mill and this... Or a fiber company and this stockyard. Then we get into Valley City. We've got our yard for interchanging car... Or switching cars. We've got freight platform with this awesome crane. Uh, and the lumber company. Then we come into Valley City proper. And, you know, I, I I do like how that all balances out. I like how these elements play together. They, they play nice. In the sense that... You're getting a little bit of different slices of life within an urban with each. I, I mean, again, admittedly, we aren't putting the inner urban with the the city here but one could always if you wanted to you could always have uh i have a feeling i'm, gonna, I'm just gonna have to do a non-sidewalk version add the sidewalks in um you could always do um you could add a streetcar like you could just have a streetcar line that goes nowhere or just goes back and forth if you don't want to mess with the inner urban. Originally, actually, the uh, the VCS and I had, um, I think it's this part of the line. It actually, or maybe this part, it ex it had a larger street network um, that isn't represented here. But that also disappeared, I think, even before the 20s. And the inner urban itself flashed until 53, so hence why we don't have that. That Wenatchee Depot off of Trains Forge might fit better where the red one is. Ah, uh, Wenatchee Depot. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna do a quick look up that and see if I agree. Um. Because I do like Trains Forge assets. We'll be seeing some of theirs uh, rolling stock later today. Let's see the Diller Depot. The Flag Stop. That Flag Stop would be nice as far as... Um, the worst Warehouse Freeze can... Pa oh, I know what that is. Yep. Um, oh, Great Northern Wenatchee Freight Depot. Uh, it might fit better, but I like the look of the red siding because that's more close to what the Sioux line actually had there. So we're going to stick with what we've got there. Okay, so we've got our track. We've got our buildings. Now let's get a little landscapey here. But thank you for the suggestion, the collaborators. Thank you for collaborating. First bit of landscaping, we have a river that we can put here. So we're going to want to lock in the height of the track so that doesn't get messed up in some capacity once we put the uh, landscaping in. And we're 
gonna make this about yay big and then kind of shape it like so. It doesn't indicate how deep the river would be. And I think given the complexity of doing geometry here, we're gonna keep it pretty shallow. More like a, a creek, if anything. Just enough to say there's a river here. Oh, I think we have our first cat cameo of the night. Say hello to Mr. Alco. Hey, buddy. I have a feeling Alco's going to try to get on the desk again. We'll see how that goes. And this is why we chose this road asset, because I like the way the embankment is going to segue into the road. Uh, we need a nice bridge. It, now, there's not really an indication of what kind of bridge it is. So we could do anything we wanted. We could do trestle. I'm kind of feeling girder. Like, kind of like that, but I don't know if I want to have to build my own. We're going to see if there's a track shape that we can use that I like rather than having to build my own. I mean... We could do that if need be, but this is even on a straight section. Oh. Now, I like this bridge. Uh, only thing is it, it really, it's, it's too deep. Too deep for what we're doing here. How deep is your bridge? Answer, in this case, not deep enough. This is kind of what I have more in mind, but even that has a lot of, um, underhang if you will like that it looks good but you can see it's not giving us any room for water so i think might even do something along the lines of this um not that i like where the having the trestle work in the middle or at least i don't think i like having the that's not too bad. I think we're going to go with that. So we're going to set that at a height of zero. And just bring that to the zero height. I'm going to add another spline point. Stream that. Delete that. Move the trestle. Oh, not deleting that. One of the number one reason I love train simming over model rarity. Just to be clear, I love them both, but... The train simming, you have an undo button. And that proves very handy. Uh, quite a few. On quite a few occasions. Uh, I'm going to put another spline point there. Because that's a little too far away. We move this here. And... Um, something's crookedy. I don't know how we got that. Let us figure out what we did wrong there. I mean, that's all... Straight, or should be. So if we add a spline point, which, or yeah, we add it. Nope. Add a spline point, and then we move this section over here. Hmm. Interesting. It's still a little crooked. Do I think that's going to be highly noticeable? Not enough for me to want to continue messing around with it. We're going to say that's good. Bring the land up to track height around here. That's, yep, that's about what I had in mind. Maybe not 100%, but good enough for the sake of demonstration. And then we can play around with it a bit more later if we want. This river's supposed to give the sense of continuing off to this side. I don't quite yet know how I'm going to end this part of the land. I probably will cut it off and make the, the remainder some kind of walkway or that type of thing. Um... Oh, I'm just reading the comments now. I see my wife requesting more cat. This, the people have spoken more cat. Well, I don't think Alco wants me to pick him up. But I can assure you he's right off screen here. If he decides to plunk himself right in front of the web... Well, he is in front of the webcam. He's just right below it. Um, maybe he'll make a cameo appearance later. Uh, I myself am using both Blender and Trains to plan my model rarity. A great way to visualize. Yep. Exactly. Just really, even 
again, as I like telling people, you don't have to go full bore and do the whole thing. Even just to be able to say, here's what it looks like with all the buildings in place. That's a really good indicator of what to expect. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I don't know that I, I want to get into texturing just yet. We've got one more bit of landscaping. That's going to be this gravel pit. So if we look at the guide, the gravel pit is basically between the tracks. So this isn't going to be anything too fancy. But it's also a chance for us to give a little bit of dimension to what's going on. Because the key with a flat layout is to not make it seem like it is flat. You want some sense that there's topography to it. And especially if you lay your track on foam, it's so easy to lay the track on foam and then carve into the foam. And that's not too complicated. I think that's going to be good enough. I mean, I mean, we're kind of in essentially alluding to more gravel pit than what we see anyway. So it's just to kind of give this idea that there is further gravel pit to be explored in the place where we humans stand. And then also over here, I want to put this up on an embankment. Well, do I want to put it up or down? So this is, again, one of the benefits of visualizing is right now, this is what it looks like if we're looking up. I actually think given that we've got the bridge, we want to have it looking down. So we're going to Put a gentle hill there. And I kind of like that better. Although maybe not quite that high up. Maybe a little softer. But I like that. Yep. Makes it feel a little bit more... Mm, inclusive of a steam. Uh, Rudy, can you find a gigantic banana asset for trains? You know, for scale. I'm losing the point of the banana. I'm sorry if that one's lost on me. Banana. I feel like I'm missing something obvious there. Forgive me. Uh, and then... Maybe we'll do a little bit of... Just a little bit of drop around the main line to give the, the main line a sense of prominence. You could even put the main line on a slightly higher elevation. We are not going to go to those lengths tonight, but just food for thought. Throwing ideas out there so that you can have more latitude with your own creations. Or once this eventually gets released, then you can be downloading it and doing your own thing with it as you see fit. I like that. I'm happy with that. Uh, let's see what the... So, in the original... Tr okay, there's another road crossing. That's what's going on there. Because I'm looking at this going... Something's up with this road. And the answer is... That road should have another one that goes like so. And that makes... A great deal of sense. And we'll lower that. Just so that the track can be... Appearing. We'll extend it to here. Because that's probably where I'll clip the table. Or put the wall in. I'm not... Quite sure how those assets will come into play yet. Um, got a crossing in place. Yep, that's a nice scene. Honestly, I mean, not that as designed, you wouldn't be able to see it this way because there's a wall there. But that just looked cool. For the inside, it looks like this, and actually, that's kind of a good scene divider in a way. If you're switching Valley City, you're over here. You're really invested in what's going on here. And then if you're on the Northern Pacific side, you're you're looking at it. You've got this kind of window here that you can look through. You've got this window here. I like that. And you'd want to keep those buildings low anyway because you're going to have to reach over them to get to your cars. Unless you completely reverse it and you have people standing on the outside. I think I'll probably do that. For this version is all make it essentially like a double-sided table so that you can 
viewed from either angle. Something along those lines. Uh, banana for scale as a meme. Also unrelated, but my friends turned a banana warehouse trains acid into a meme all over their roof. Yes, and the only banana meme I know of is peanut butter jelly time, which probably dates me. But shout out if you know peanut butter jelly time. Uh, okay, I want to put a haze, some bumpers in. In a few places. Uh, where they feel like, hey, this is, seems like a place that a bumper would be. Let us measure this. We're going to want to make sure that we can fit our interurban. Uh, why am I not seeing it appear? I'm placing it and I'm not seeing it. This is... Okay. For the time being, we'll place this and we'll measure this. Uh, I think I'm going to place an invisible track just to give a little bit of headroom. Um, just going to mean deleting that. Because there's enough room for the car, but the sim is going to want a little bit of extra headroom. So we'll give it that little bit of extra headroom. Straighten that out. And then there's our leeway. Now when we place our invisible for valley. Yep. Now that can fit on the track. And ooh, there's really not a lot of breathing room there. But there's enough for it to get around a cut of cars. So that'll work. We will We'll give that a little bit of an extension, just to say that we did. Right about here. Delete that. Get that. Move that. I mean, that is putting it really tight to the main line. Uh, maybe halfway? Um, we'll move this. And then we'll just add eh, just a few feet. And then delete. Uh, it looks a bit odd because that's different. So we'll move it here. I can live with that. Good enough for me. So we have some landscape. We have some track. And we have some buildings. So... What do we have left to do in 30 minutes? Well, uh, I would say we have some catenary to place. Catenary and train Z. You can make it easy on yourself. You can make it hard on yourself. We're going to try to keep it easy. Um, so as you can see, in train Z, your catenary really isn't... Um, doing anything you can run electric locomotives on tracks without a wire and it will not care but we're gonna try to do what we can to get it to be somewhat realistic um so it has to end there and this is gonna get really nutty really quickly so i don't know how much i want to obsess over this kind of thing but we'll do what seems reasonable just so that when we're playing with it we look at it and go yeah that feels like an interurban well that was interesting um i feel like i'm gonna need a pole here but the pole is yeah Man, that's not a good spot at all. Because I want to put the, the... Where you're seeing the center of the circle is where the electric line goes. And then you look over and how much it's expelling it in the next track and you just go, ugh. Um, so part of the thing to do would be to have some kind of bridge to hook up to multiple lines. And I think that's what we'll likely end up doing. So I'm probably going to be focused on just placing the lines... And we'll just place the lines and then we'll figure out how to 
make it look realistic after the fact. Um, now this is going to be interesting too because it want I want to do intersections, but I don't want to actually have to place a spline point there because otherwise then it's going to be awkward. I might have to actually hide the track to get it to properly junction. Because it keeps saying you can't attach this, but I think it's because it's trying to attach the road. Maybe let's hide the road, if that's what's going on. Or we'll try it on the north side to see. I don't want to waste your time with I mean, maybe you find me struggling with trolley poles fascinating, in which case uh, I will continue to struggle with them. Uh, I, I'm going to work on them for, for some degree of time, but I, I don't want to go too crazy on this one. Um, And then we'll just place it going along here. I actually am kind of inclined to reverse the side it's on. But, you know, I don't know that I want to get it to that much of the weeds with it. Because this could get very nutty very quickly. And I don't want it to be that. I, I'm probably already going to take some shortcuts just so that... I'd like to get some textures down just so it looks pretty. And then we will... Um, then we'll have our, our playtime. I mean, that looks cool. Nothing else. Man, it, it's hard enough doing this in... Uh, doing all this trolley wiring in the sim. I have a great <laughs> appreciation for folks who do it. Uh, not uh, There's... there's uh, folks who just lay their own trolley poles, that's cool enough as it is. And then I give folks credit who actually have their layouts powered by trolley wire that is amazing there's a group on facebook i've joined recently that uh specializes in traction and so forth and i, I see some of the stuff that they're involved with and I, I look at that i go that is really i give you a lot of credit for being that dedicated and trying to make it work because I just think of how finicky all of that is. Certainly proving to be finicky here in the sim, because I'm trying to place it, and it says, you've exceeded the amount of intersections. Maybe it doesn't like the fact that I'm trying to intersect two different things, so maybe we'll just do something like this. I mean, getting it to line up is going to be... <sighs> awkward at best. So we're going to go with a close enough approach for now. Because I can fight this battle later. And then you can just appreciate the results after the fact. You go, man. That is crazy. But I wasn't trying to have it intersected with there. Why do you think I was? I would love to see a train sim come out that's devoted to streetcars and trolleys. Because none of them are, are there as far as being able... Because obviously you can run streetcars in a lot of different games. There's uh, and They all have different ones with different strengths. Uh, one of my favorite items of all time is the London and Port Stanley Railroad for Microsoft Train Simulator, which also works in open rails. Um, also a big fan of the Sacramento Northern for Railworks, but all of them have the same limitation, which is the, the trolley pole doesn't actually follow the wire, um, which you could get away with if you've got the larger pantographs as some inner urbans do, but I love a sim that has trolley pole and the trolley pole and you actually would get to raise and lift the pole off the wire and so forth that would be really fun oh dear sorry about the spam guys i will get that cleaned up 
momentarily. Um, yay for YouTube not necessarily having the best. Um, editing tools and being a one-man operation and all that. But I hope while I'm removing these spam messages, I hope that uh, you are enjoying tonight's build. I hope that you find this interesting to watch train layout like this come together. Um... Uh, Kevin Seibert, how would one model scale, uh, catenaries in such a small scale? Um, I mean, 3D printing has made some things easier, um, but honestly, I feel like a lot of it is patience. Um, I, I'm not the guy to ask about how, I'm the guy who just admires the work of others on that particular front. Okay, that looks like an inner urban. Uh, perhaps maybe too many poles, but we're going to go with that for now. Uh, and let's check. Do, I don't think... No, the, the Sioux interchange is not wired. So presumably the Sioux would have to bring the cars into, onto the line, say around here, something like that. Or you'd have to reach with cars, which you could, and maybe that's part of the operational challenge. Uh, let's put some trolley wire over that siding over here. Um... So we're going to go back to grabbing our pole. And we're going to connect that with... Uh, actually, no, we're not going to connect that with that. We are just going to place a straight section like so. About here. And then we're going to have a wire that connects... The key with that I'm focusing on with placing this wire is if it looks good enough. Oh, that actually should be a place for the regular pole too. So pole to here. And then we'll place a trolley wire from here. And connect it to here. And that looks good enough to me. Yeah. Yep, that has that inner urban feel. That makes me happy. That makes me very happy. Um, so, we actually might need to add a spline point in order to add... Yeah, we're going to add a spline point there to be able to connect the wire. Except that adding the spline point over the switch does the thing, which is not what I wanted to do. There we go. I think that'll work. Won't quite line up, but if you're staring that closely at my tri trolley wire work, I've probably not done a good enough job with the rest of the scenery. Uh, and then... I think we'll place that to about here. And then we're going to have a pole coming from here to here. About like so. Ye yep, like so. And that way we've got that at the intersection. Ugh, this yard. Okay, um, so I think this yard we're just going to do as... Um, we're just going to do it as wire. And then we're going to take it from there. Uh, let's see. Okay, I nabbed the bots. Uh, trains... 2034 finally the trolley pole said automatically connect and follow overhead wires train z might be honestly i feel like it's going to be a matter of a new game i feel like to get it truly right somebody's going to need to build a game with the intention of getting 
trolleys accurate. I, I feel like trying to retrofit a pre-existing game to have the physics capabilities to follow trolley wire is probably not there. I am not a coder. That is my impression, not my professional knowledge, but that would be my guess. Okay, so coming into the yard, we've got... This may not be so bad. We've got three live tracks, which is these two tracks here, this freight platform, and this lumber shed. This is not wired. This is Northern Pacific. So, we can do this. I'm psyching myself up. Oh, I should have put all the wire on a separate layer so you could toggle it on and off. Uh, I will do that later. In the meantime, uh, what do I want to do here? I think we're probably just going to do trolley. Let's see what this trolley pole three looks like. Well, that's interesting. I don't think that's going to be helpful to us, but it's interesting. Let me see what other options I have that are readily at my disposal. That's also a trolley wire. Uh, mostly just these IRM things. Uh, see, that's kind of what I'm thinking here. Although it's maybe a little too robust. I like the look of this bridge, but it's a little... grand? For what we're doing on this one again benefit of modeling um in urbans in general is just this idea that there's kind of all these different ways you could do it okay we're gonna do it to about here and that's not gonna be 100 percent accurate but it's close enough and that way we can fit the pole in someplace because i think i'm gonna try to make this work with just poles We're going to bring this to about here. And then we're just linking up pre-existing wire. And I think... Keep that straight. And then we'll bring a second one to here. And then we're going to link that with a separate wire. And then as far as poles are concerned, will it allow me to do a junction off of... It will actually allow me to do a junction off of that. So... We're going to put a wire here, connect it to that. Um, which is not probably going to follow the contour properly, but I'm more concerned about where the poles go than if the contour is there entirely. And let's go to this. And... Yeah, this isn't so bad. I thought this would be nightmarish. It's... Complicated, but it's all good. I got you guys for company, too. When I have you guys, I have all that I need. Yep, I like that. Hi, CH2112CH. Glad that you could join us. Um, I think we're going to do... See, this is where there'd probably be, like, a pole with a wire string across, and then the wire's connected to that. I want to do this out one side one first before I figure out how the heck I'm going to do that, though. We'll connect this here. We're doing good on time. I've got about 15 minutes before we start playtime. So, that's a good thing. So I hope you guys are learning something about inner urbans. I mean, the, the thing about inner urbans is that there's such an interesting window into railroad history, often overlooked because many of them disappeared. There aren't exactly a lot of them around, but they're so funky and characteristic. I just, I love, I love me a good inner urban. I love me a good trolley museum. Favorite trolley museum. Share in the comments. I, I'm curious to see where you've been that you enjoy going. Oh, I think I know what I'm going to do. And it's going to be kind of funky. But I'm going to make my own bridges. The wire. 
between the poles because that seems like a good idea. It may be a bad idea, but it's what I want to do. Uh, and then that's going to need to split off there. So we're going to attach a bridge between this pole. This is like a crazy game of connecting the dots. But it actually kind of works. Some of the trolley enthusiasts might be screaming, no, this is not how poles would be set up. But it looks like a bunch of wire, and that's what I'm going for. <laughs> actually, I'm really happy with that. That looks pretty good. Um, yeah, makes me happy. Makes me happy that we're doing this, this particular design tonight, because this is... Uh, this is a cool one. It's a cool plan, and it would be nifty on its own, even if we were just doing, um, even if we were just doing diesel era, because I think that there's a good amount of switching that this provides to make it worthwhile. I also just think it's, but when you take it the distance and you make it an actual inner urban, then. And it's something magical. Okay. That looks good. Yes, I know we have some curves that are suspended in midair for no reason. Yes, I will probably refine that later. Um, That's the one curve that's bothering me. Most everything else kind of sort of works. Let me see. Let me just do a little bit of refinement on this. If I move that, because if I move the curve to the where it intersects with the other line, then it then it makes visual sense. I'm just trying to make sure that what we're doing here makes visual sense. It's not about getting it perfect. It's just, does this look okay? And yes, I know how far that that leans over. We're, we're sticking with that. Yeah, that. Okay, that's the way I want to do it. Yeah. There we go. That, that's a proper spider's web. Whoa. Sorry about that. That's a proper spider's web, if I do say so myself. Um, uh, so the collaborator says, looks great so far. Can't wait until you start adding some vehicles. Uh, and then Rudy corrects that into, looks great, can't wait for Nick to start making unnecessary switching moves running off the end of tracks. And... No, that is not happening tonight. We are in top physical form and shape and mind and everything's going to be awesome. Um, <sighs> Jeez, you guys. <sighs> I can't bring you anywhere. Can't bring you anywhere. But, that is pretty good. I, I'm I'm happy with that. We're gonna leave that for now. Um, before I decide to get unnecessarily picky with it, and that it takes up time for uh, what we actually want to do, which is running some interurbans. So let us do some texturing. Um. I should probably establish what the boundaries are of the thing too, but I think we're just going to go with kind of some general swatches and, and go off of that. Um, I want kind of a dry grass look for this. Because this is sort of... Ugh, not those dry grasses. Um, too rocky. I like that, but not... Let's see what PBR dry yields, because, yeah, I think that'll work as a base. So this will be our base, and then we're going to be adding, oh, I kind of forgot about the river there, didn't I? Uh, yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. So we'll start with this section here. I like this as a grass. Most of this is going to get covered over by dirt and stuff like that, but, um, let's do a little bit like this. 
This might have a proper parking lot, but I'm kind of inclined to do it as more patchy, dirty kind of thing. We'll see what that comes to be. Again, we're just doing approximations here because... Yeah. I do like this dry grass look, though. That's I, I often go for kind of darker greens and that kind of thing, so... Doing a little bit of scrubby dry grass. Yeah, I like how that looks. We'll... Yeah, let's do some soil texture. Yeah, for the time being, that'll work fine. Just to get around here, yeah. Get those buildings look a little bit more deliberate. And interesting. Actually, that matches that road texture pretty well. I'll use that as our kind of transitional texture between the road and the ground. Yeah, that looks really nice, actually. Obviously, could do super detailing with sidewalks, traffic lights, that kind of thing. Uh, does that road cross the tracks? No, it does not. Which is okay by me. Keeping that theme going as we continue north. We'll just get a big amount of that placed all over this. I, I'm, I'm probably going to place a background just so that we've got one in place and that the Main line isn't too distracting for us. And we'll go up to city limits here. And let's see what we end up doing. A lot of dirt. Going to be a lot of dry grass, a lot of dirt. Especially with that lumber yard. So we're really going to go heavy on this dry grass. Going to add probably some stones, some boughs, but not tons. Right away wasn't exactly really well kept on this, so. I think this is the one that we said parallels the street really well. Um, let's go riverbed. A bit too rocky. Soil texture with dry mud. Uh, let's look at uh, dirt. Uh, I want to go more browns. I often go for grays. This one I'm going for more browns. Mud. Some mud seems okay. I mean, one could always have it as kind of uh, like after a recent rain. Some people do. Uh, make their layouts kind of weather contingent as far as there was recently rain or snow or something like that. You don't see a lot of winter layouts. That That is definitely for sure. Um, I'm not making this one seasonal. That just feels like too much of a muchness. But I like that. And then a lot of dirt around here because this is going to be the loading platform. Um, I do not play trains like Gomez, Adams, Rudy. You are clearly mistaken. Um, oh, collaborators, T28 from Trainsforge. Well, happy to have somebody from Trainsforge tuning in today. You and your team do some excellent pieces of work, I will say. I've definitely seen your username. I'm not placing what content of yours I've used, although I could also probably filter for it. So I'll do that in a moment. Gravel pit. I wonder what texture we should use for that. Yeah, and this is a good place to use some grays because then it, it adds a little bit of visual variety because we've got all these browns and green so and then we'll just do a little bit around the track to blend it in good enough for now um and we'll 
I don't know how much of this is going to be visible once we put the background in. Good enough for now. All right, last uh, push as far as the um, as far as the initial texture is concerned. But I I'm really happy that we got this one done in or at least the the kind of large components of it done within the span of a single stream. This felt like a single stream uh, build, and I'm glad to see that I was proven correct on that. Because there will be fine-tuning to do, but I feel like this is a yeah, few hours of work, and then we'll get the get it nicely um, packaged up and available for you guys to play with and download. Because I think this is a good... Talk, getting back to talking about the plan, I think what makes this... I mean, we'll find more about what makes it great when we're actually playing with it and, and see how it holds up under play testing, which is, again, a big reason that we do these builds. But from a standpoint of just talking about it visually, we get different slices of life we got more of a town here we've got really the far end of the town on this side um a nice variety of industries to work both from the vcs and i as well as from the neighboring sioux line and the northern <clears throat> excuse me northern pacific um Millennial Modeler, Winter Layout here. You haven't lived until you've spent an evening with Woodland Scenic's water effect making hundreds of icicles. <laughs> I uh, That does sound like living. Uh, I would be uh, fascinated to, to feel free to shoot me an email with what you're working on because I'm always curious when it comes to people who've decided to be um, daring and do different seasons. I like this ballast texture. It doesn't match the track 100%, but... It looks good. And I'm probably going to vary this more, but this will be good for now because I've got two minutes left till we do playtesting. And I'm I'm happy with what we've gotten, what we've accomplished in two hours. I mean, we took this from nothing to a, a halfway decently scenic layout where we could see... You can start to see these elements unfolding. You know, we've got, we've got the track in place. We've got the trolley wire. And the, having the trolley wire is such a big thing. It just, especially when you, a, a yard with trolley wire. I mean, if we look at at this over here, I mean, it just, this is an urban railroading. The, a yard like this is an urban railroading. Um, I kind of want to replace those switch stands with invisible ones too, just to get them out of my hair and then we'll put a wall up um so we'll search for invisible and switch stands and we'll do a uh bulk replace of the default switch stands with an invisible junction lever invisible that'll work for now we will add other lovers more, more later, more later thing. But for now, that way I get the switch stands out of my way. Last thing I want to do, I want to put in a wall. We're going to go with walls. We're going to unlock that layer. We're going to go with MR wall. Um... MR wall or spline backdrop. And we're going to take this along the edge of where it should be, thereabouts. Did I. Is that a. That is a really tall wall. That's not quite what I had in mind. Um, I think we need backdrops. Showing evidence of. I haven't. 
Okay. And no shadow. Yep, that is what I wanted. Okay, so we're going to treat this like the plan treats it, which is that this is our outside. We're going to kind of rough it for now, and then we'll hone that in later. And then right about here, I think, is where it comes into play. We will turn on the base maps to... S you know, that's not going to be much help. I'm going to have to... Um, and I want to go back to the walls layer, adding this so that we have our disappearing act with the Northern Pacific. We curve this guy and we straighten that, curve this around the edge. This is going to be interesting one to figure out how to do the backdrop buildings. In some ways it's not too hard because we could... We can move the staging track back. There's there's things we could do on that particular front. Okay, there we have it. Uh, and then let us, for the last piece de la resistance, we are going to just add another level of wall. And we're going to of that bad boy around here ish eh, kind of sort of definitely some finessing I want to figure out but good enough for now coming down the back stretch and then we'll curve around here and then we'll meet it up with here. And there we have it. Uh, ish. Just polishing that. There we go. Okay. So this gives us a sense of what we're going for. Oh, jeez. This is why I wish YouTube would be better at its spam. But we will get rid of that because nobody likes spam. And of course, some of it is hiding behind where I put my camera. Okay. There we go. Got that out of the way. So, I'm happy with that for tonight as far as uh, getting it built. Uh, coming up shortly, we're going to do some play testing, but. Before we do that, quick reflection on what we've accomplished tonight. We've done everything you see here. We've got the bare bones. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't even say the bare bones, but we've got the the key scenery blocks in place. I mean, we we're gonna want some trees. I mean, I'm really I'm looking at this and going, oh yeah, we kind of don't have any trees. So we're gonna need some trees. Gonna need some some sense of backdrop. Oh, there's your cat cameo as Alco flashing his, his tail in front of the camera. I think they wanted to see your face, boy. I don't think they were going for the the tail. Um, but this gives us a chance to be able to see what these scenes look like in essence. And then it's going to be a matter of adding more detail and finessing them, finessing the textures and so forth. But this gives us enough to play with. So we're going to save that because cut the thick of it. We haven't done a single save tonight. And that's a bad idea. So there we go. We've saved. Okay. So what do we want to do here? Uh, we want to play with some trains. So first we're going to spawn in. We've got a nickel plate RS-11. And... I want to do a little bit of play with each. Obviously, the inner urban is going to be our f focus. Um, maybe let's start with the Sioux and see how far we get. Because we could sp spawn in another engine. Plus, that Alco sitting there is going to be kind of noisy. So, we're going to have our Sioux line train come in. I think we're going to bring some cars for interchange uh, with that. And then... Or maybe the other way around. Yeah, let's let's do that the other way around. Let's start with the inner urban. 
Um, we're going to start our day off with this guy just sitting out by the yard office. And let's get some boxcars placed. Um, well, nothing over there because we can't reach that with the electric. Uh, but let's say we've got a couple of cars to go through. Okay, we've got a couple of cars that are going to be going through uh, to the Sioux. Uh, let's say we've got a gravel. Uh, let's put a gondola for the gravel. Uh, can I load that with gravel? I can try. So much for that. Okay. So, well, I'll just have to pretend that that has a gravel load in it. And we'll have another car at interchange for pickup. This is going to be interesting to play around with and figure out where do interchange cars actually sit and so forth. I think they're going to actually, I think they will sit on this track. Just a lot of room for them. Is that an issue? That's what we're going to find out. Um, we'll put another 40-foot car there. So the CNE car is going to be a through. That Michigan Central car is going to be replacing the car at the quarry. Uh, stock cars. Do I have any stock cars? That's an interesting question. I don't usually find myself in need of running stock cars. Should probably have a tank car around somewhere else. Um, stock didn't cert and come up with anything. Hmm. Oh no, not those. Um. Let's see, let's... Okay. For demonstration purposes only. <laughs> uh, we're gonna use a reefer. And then... Let's go for another 40-foot box car. For that factory. I mean, possibly could even use a tank car there. Uh, we'll do a WP car. Not that car. Santa Fe, perfect. Okay. Okay, so how do I want to run this? I mean, if my interchange only accepts two cars... Let's see if we could fit three, though. I mean, we can't fit three to go in that middle track. But if we leave three at the station... Hmm. Oh, and we should do passenger as well. So we've got our freight loader, we've got our passenger. So we should do passenger run first and then do some switching. That way we're also kind of making sure the switchers are aligned properly. Uh, I like the sound of that. Um, I think uh, 50 foot flat. Um, we're going to put... Yeah, we're going to put a flat car here. Can I load it with lumber? I can. Nice. Ooh, that looks spiffy. Okay. We've got a loaded car. I dig it. Um, so we'll pretend that that's supposed to be empty. And we'll instead switch out one of these guys. Okay. And now, last thing before we get to the playtest and the surprise... Uh, yes, the beef is already processed in this case. Just saving you some time. I don't want to have to do grocery shopping to get, uh, get the right kind of car. We're going to put... So, the what's interesting is by what I've read of the VCS and I, this was... These two cars did not coexist on the railroad at the same time. 
this car number two was what they would use for both passenger and freight for decades. Then when it got too worn out, they brought this car in from another line, uh, which originally was a snow plow. They took the plow off the front end, but that's what those remaining struts are. Um, and there was also a weight on the back. And they removed that. Um, so they weren't together, but for the sake of play tonight, we're going to run both of them. So they will both simultaneously exist. Okay, your clue as to what we're going to be, what this big surprise is, actually requires me to turn down the volume of the music. I'm going to keep it very soft in the background. But as... Some of you know if you play Trains with a Z. If you're listening to, uh, when it comes to sounds, the electrics by default sound like a TGV. Actually, they, they more appropriately sound like, or, uh, specifically, they, they sound like the gates of heaven are opening. This is very wah sound. If you play Train Z, you know what I mean. And that's the electric sound. Until now. Check this out. Actually, I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna delete the other card because otherwise we're gonna hear both of them. That's gonna be a little noisy. So we'll delete this one for the time being. Okay. And here we go. Hear that compressor noise? So, these sounds that you're about to hear are sounds that I recorded at the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum from a variety of different cars. Uh, a lot of them came off of their open air car, which was great because then you, you don't have the acoustics that give it that kind of boxed in feeling. It's very open. It is an open air car. Um, oh, and you heard how the compressor kicked off too. So, we're going to put the pantograph up, or pantograph, I'm using trains parlance, but really it's trolley wire. And here we go. So we've picked up our passengers here in, oh, how hard are these switches going to be? Hmm. I might have to change these switches because I can't highlight over them, and that's kind of awkward from a play standpoint. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Um, so we're you'll hear the sounds in just a moment. So we're going to do bulk replace of this junction lever invisible with... Uh, uh, I guess we'll try this one. I mean, it shouldn't matter because they're all invisible anyway. Um, one or more section. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Um, so we're going back to there, back to the root layer. The... Uh, oh, it did it. It did the thing already. Okay. Now I can properly highlight over them. And here we go. So all of these sounds that you're hearing are sounds that I recorded. The whistle, the bell, the compressor, the different speeds, all the the track noise, all from real trolley cars.
traction motor wine. And there you have it. It is a very short run, so that is kind of the downside of it being... Um, the downside of it being so small. But again, for being able to fit this much layout and do a 5 by 7 space, because the, again, the only cheating I've done is I've extended this section down here a little bit. So if you move this back, operationally it's the same. And obviously the inner urban is still a point to point endeavor. You hear the compressor kicking on again. So this time, now that we know the switches are set correctly, I'm gonna I'm gonna put us at the controls for the return trip. So what do you guys think of that? Do you like those sounds? And yes, Ted, before you ask, I do intend to release them at some point. Uh, I just really want to test them a lot to make sure that they're, they work properly um, and that they function well, and then I'll package them up and put them up for upload somewhere. Because we just, we needed good, we needed good traction sounds. We needed good trolley sounds. Um, so there you have it. So that that's the passenger run. So obviously, very straightforward, just going back and forth with that. But as I say, for a number of decades, this was the car. It was something of a mixed train operation where the where the combine would be hauling passengers with the freight. But in the interest of having some variety, we're going to swap out our motive power. So we're going to we're going to get this, we're going to delete that, and then we're going to add in, if I can delete the car, or did I add the car to the walls layer? That's why I can't delete it. Yay for me and forgetting to uh, switch between levels. Okay, so uh, what we are going to do today is we're going to pick up well, lumber obviously has to go, so I think we're going to pick up the lumber, we're going to pick up the two box cars. that's going to be our traffic to the Sioux line, and then um, on the return, we're going to grab these two cars and these two cars and bring them back to the yard. We'll start with that. And here we go. Again, same trolley sounds that you heard before, but... Instead of a whistle, this time we have a horn. Again, recorded off of real streetcars at the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum. 
we'll throw the light on just because it looks better with that. Again, I got to give a huge shout out to Mr. Mr. Uh, P. Weiser, the trains uh, modeler. Uh, he does a number of, if you search P. Weiser on Google, you'll find his website. He does a number of He specializes in traction, so that's why I knew I could go to him with the drawings and say, hey, do you think you'd be willing to do this? And bless his heart, he was willing to, because this is, this is, I knew if I did this route, I wanted the traction to go with it. Oh, I forgot all the switches have the default radius is applied oh well we'll make it work and then if i need to finagle some of them i will i love too how the trolley pull automatically reverses when you're changing direction that's kind of a nice touch I love the fact that there's an interior on it as well. It's kind of... It, it, it's a little gimmicky from the standpoint of layout testing, but it's just... It's just really cool to be able to actually... You know, here I am walking around inside the actual interurban freight motor. And of course, that compressor. Okay, we're gonna grab those lumber cars next. So what do you think of this? Do, does this make anybody reconsider whether they'd consider doing... Uh, reconsider whether they'd consider. Does, does it make you consider uh, inner urbans in a way that you might not have before? Again, yes, you could certainly do this as a diesel road and, and nothing wrong with that. It, it would be a great layout to do diesel era. I just think it, there's something really... I love the, the personality that inner urban lines have. And this one in particular, you figure it's got this faded World War II era patriotic scheme on it. It clearly looks, kind of, it has this sort of fish out of water kind of look, but here it is doing this switching. It's, it's, it's distinct. But what's great about being able to do trains these short, short given time once i get this released you'll be able to enjoy this as well now the the interurban cars you're seeing those have already been released by p wiser um those are already out there um the layout once i have time to work on it will go on to greattrainlayouts.com While I'm thinking of it, and while I'm talking about equipment, I also want to give a shout out to tonight's sponsor, Jointed Rail. Uh, if you play Train Z, and if you enjoy North American content, especially diesel era, uh, JointedRail.com, they make some amazing models. Uh, when we were building the Golf Sub uh, back in May, we got to see their SD40s in action. And this is in Urban. Uh, but uh, some of the freight cars that you see are uh, like the box car. Th well, actually, I think this hopper or um, this gondola as well. It, this is freeware stuff that you could just download. But they have some really incredibly skilled modelers on their team, and they do some uh, amazing work. So let's get these cars off to interchange. I feel like the horn's overkill in the yard. I gotta get used to using the bell. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, it was fun going back to the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum. Uh, growing up in Northwestern PA, I really loved uh, visiting them, usually around Christmas time for their Santa trolleys. And being in Central Virginia, I obviously don't get to see them as much. So it was really good to spend some time with them. Very friendly crew. Uh, very much made me feel welcome. I, I lucked out in that I was able to visit them during their fair week. So they are set up to be running... They have these parking lots that are a few miles from these fairgrounds, so when the fair's going on, they will shuttle people from these parking lots to the fairgrounds for a really cheap price. Great museum. If you're ever in southwestern Pennsylvania, you, you owe it to yourself to visit the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum. So this is going to be interesting. I, I don't yet know quite how I want to do this. I'm going to try pulling these cars into the interchange track first. I don't yet know how I want to do this. Octopat, you're a motorman, and so you're happy to hear the proper freight noises. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad that we're 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 satisfying that need. I mean, that's the thing is that a lot of the Sims. There's, there's good trolley and traction sounds for MSTS, especially with the London Port Stanley add-on, but... Um, uh, how do I want to do this? Um, I think we're going to have to kind of seesaw it in. But yeah, sounds are everything. Sounds really, uh, I mean, whether you're talking DCC for model railroading or you're talking train simming, having the right sounds makes all the difference. And so I was really happy to have the opportunity to record their trolleys and streetcars. It just gave me this whole audio bank of all these different clanks, whooshes, compressors, brakes, uh, flange squeal. A lot of fun. So we're going to see if we can just fetch those cars off the interchange and then um, switch places with them. Push them back. I don't know if I have enough headroom. Hmm. This is going to be interesting. I think I'm going to use a... I'm going to use a boxcar as my spacer. I think if I use the boxcar as a spacer, I could get those cars fished off. And then I can grab... I can put them on the... Yep, I know how I want to do this. It adds an interesting layer of operational challenge if you deliberately leave some areas dry electric wise so that then you have to have cars to reach to where you're going to go let's have a look at the ground level view of this oh I like that like that is a nice scene obviously we're going to add some grass we're going to add more refinement to it but it it looks Distinct. I, I I like the character of the scene. Yeah, we're gonna have to re fix the trolley wire height, but that because everything's flat should just be a matter of figuring out what is the correct height and then copying that throughout. So let's have a look. So, yep, our box car allowed us to fish that out. So, I think we're going to take these. Oh, I don't have enough room to put them there, though. Hmm. I thought I got coupled up to them. Okay. Take two.
Okay, there we go. Well, there really is not a lot of room on the head end. Like, there's only room for my freight motor. So I kind of feel like we have to put the box car off to the side and then use these two cars as our spacer to get the rest of the cars on there. A lot of seesawing. And... Oop! Made it! Nope, I'm not gonna hear- Oh, wait, I know why that happened. Yeah, I may have forgotten to throw a switch. Could have happened to anyone. Nothing to see here. Uh, nothing, nothing at all to see here, folks. Um... Oh, I can't move it because it's considered it derailed. Oh, well, okay. Why can't I? Oh, can I not? I know why I can't delete it. Because it's on that locked layer that I made. Because for some reason I put all of the cars on the locked layer. Uh, okay. Everything's good. Nothing to see here. We got it all fixed up. Yay for uh, using the five-fingered crane. Okay, everything's back to normal. Nothing to see. Oh, I have to re-rail the engine. Eh, I'm going to be better off just placing a new one in there because it doesn't like re-railing. It likes... <sighs> and then I have to take it off the layer. Well, I suppose it was bound to happen. Okay, there's our freight motor. Good as new. And then put the trolley wire back up. Interesting switching conductor. But I feel like you really do have to put the cars out on the the interchange. Because if you put them in here, you only have room for two of them. So I guess that's kind of the easier way to operate is to say that your Sioux crew has to bring the cars in, run around them, and then seesaw them in onto the track here. And your advance mode is that they're left here and you have to fish them out with spacer cars. Uh, Gilbert Porter, will you continue your progress on the N-scale, uh, BC Rail Tumblr Ridge layout plan? That is my goal. I will confess that I haven't, I, I did a little bit of work to it toward the end of June, early July. I haven't touched it recently, but I would like to get back to that. So, hmm, how do I want to do this? But yes, it is my intention to, behind the scenes, I'm going to work on a plan, and then we're going to build that plan in the sim. Maybe this is just more complex than it's worth, because I'd have to fish one car. I'd have to... I mean, I could kick the car. If, if this was another sim, I could just kick that box car onto the passing siding, but that's not going to quite work here. I think we're going to just make it easy on our... I can't make it easy on ourselves because I have to get the cars in here. Hmm. This is why we play test is to kind of see uh, what does and doesn't make sense as far as being able to fit things operationally. I think we might have to electrify at least a little bit of the branch because otherwise it just becomes too difficult because I have to get this car onto that siding. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get anything else on there. Because I can't use this track. I don't have enough room for that with the length of the the head track. And when I look at it at the plan, it's only about nine inches long. So I've, I haven't really shortchanged myself as to how much room I have there. It's really supposed to be super short. So. Um. This layout reminds me of the previously mentioned PA Trolley Museum with the main line, uh, Pittsburgh and Ohio Central at the museum paralleling the underurban part of the road. It does have that feel, honestly. And I was lucky when I was there, I actually got to see uh, Genesee and Wyoming, the company that owns the Ohio Central now, got to see them working, which has never happened before. I never had that kind of good luck, and I saw them working the plant that right next to the line. 
so, yeah, I think that one really has to have a little bit of a lead here with the wire. Otherwise, there's just, there isn't enough room. That or in, increase the size of this track and have it cross over the curve. But that's, those are the only ways I could see making that work. So I'll have to give that some thought as far as the compromise I want to make there. Because otherwise it's just, it's unnecessarily complicated. But I think this, as long as you say you could get one car in there, then it works okay. Because now we're going to grab three cars and then we're going to fish the third car and then the fourth car over that track. Then we run around them, then we take them back to interchange. So again, this how complex you want to make your operations is up to you. You could electrify the whole interchange. You could have the Sioux line under the wires and therefore you're, you have all of this room. You'd actually take your train out onto the interchange and work it out there. I, I think probably the compromise I'm going to make um, is... Oops, I forgot to leave that flat car behind. Um... I think that I'm going to put this part under the wire so that you're at least able to go out onto that part of the line. I think that's the way that I'm going to modify this. Uh, technically and historically speaking, you can't do a crossover. Yeah, I agree with you, Octopat. So I think that I'm probably just going to leave that track the length that it is and just put trolley wire so that you don't have to fish cars out from the interchange. It's just a matter of switching them back and forth. Uh, I'm going to modify that switch just so that I don't have to go so far away from it. Uh, we're going to modify that to zero and we're going to apply that to here, here, and here. That way I can toggle that switch and get my car onto the interchange track. Switching with a trolley, uh, with an interurban that would have a trolley pole like this, I imagine that could get very uh, time consuming as well it's not like you have to re reverse the pole for every move but if you're going over switches making sure that you take the right wire is something that one has to be mindful of so it's interesting to consider that howdy pacific limited studios glad you could join us but i think that this is what i like about it is that in a way, this is a complex switching move, but but it's not that hard. I can see what I need to do, and I, I like the fun of it. It's it's a nice scene. And if you were just interchanging the two cars, then you'd be able to just have the Sioux line running around in the backdrop, kind of doing its own thing. We're going to be interchanging three. And while I'm moving this last lumber car out onto the interchange, I want to remind folks that if you want to check out more of my work, both video, uh, in terms of the videos pertaining to what makes this layout great and Great Train Layouts Live, as well as download the routes that you see on the show, go to Great Train Layouts Live, or not Great Train Layouts Live, greattrainlayouts.com, and you'll be able to download uh, the routes that you see on the show over there. Hmm. Gonna have to make a rule about how much room. Because these two flat cars are just too much at once. And yeah, you could seesaw them back and forth through eternity, but it, it might just be having to set limits of like only interchanging two cars at once. Because I don't think one needs to be doing a lot to have it be interesting. I think just the fact that you. It, we've talked about this concept before. It's not always about having a super long train. It's just about having enough to do with your train to keep it entertaining. So this might be more of a two-car thing as opposed to three cars. I'm going to 
self-congratulate myself too and say I'm really happy with how these inner urbans sound. With all the clanks and the squeals, I'm really happy with how those turned out. Uh, Octopat. Actually, yes, you do have to change the pole direction unless you have multi-directional poles, but it's a pain to do the switching with double pulled cars like most are. Yes. And if you were running, I mean, it's one thing if you're doing modeling and the pole is just decorative, but if you're getting your power from the pole uh, in HO scale uh, and having to switch this, then that that becomes part of the work. So I think in some ways limiting your interchange isn't a bad idea because there's still a lot to be said. So I think two cars for interchange is a good amount in this particular case. We're going to do a run around move. The motor sounds are kind of off with how fast I'm going. Yeah, that's... And this is another reason why I think that there needs to be a dedicated... game designed for inner urbans. Which I'll explain in a moment. See, the problem with Train Z sounds is that... Especially in DCC mode, you have eight different sound files for essentially standing still to full speed. So if you're thinking about it in terms of a diesel, you've got throttle one, throttle two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so you have eight different continuous sounds that loop. So the track sounds, there's no way to scale them to the speed because there's always going to be a little bit of a discrepancy um, in terms of how fast... Because it's, it's not looping it based on the speed. It's looping it based on when you look at the throttle, whether it's in you know 10%, 20%. That's how it's determining the, the different sounds. So I'd love to see a trolley sim come out that would scale the speed um, based on what you were doing. Uh, Moose, uh, what's the name of that asset? Uh, what asset? You, you'll have to be a little bit more specific than that. But here we go. Um, we're bringing our cars back from interchange. We're going to pick up two cars from the... Uh, I mean, I love this. It's so bizarre looking, and yet it feels just right. I, I feel like we might... I don't know if we'll come back to this next month, but I want to come back to this and play it with you again. Especially once we've got the scenery all polished up. Uh, and I've figured out the right balance of operations. I think it'd be fun to come back here. Um, would you, I, I mean, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see this for next month, where we finish up, we do the super detailing, and we play with it again, or whether you want me to move on to, to something else. I haven't yet decided. Well, I have an idea of what I would do for September, um, if we move on, but I am open to the idea of coming back to this. So this is going to be super easy. We're just going to pick up these two cars. But first, a quick break.
And we're back. So let's go make that hitch. Um, while we do that, uh, looking at your comments, um, Hartford and Springfield Street Railway, Octopath, is that a track plan that already exists? Because I'm looking for track plans that already exist that I can adapt. I'd also be a little leery because of doing another in urban um, that's not this, just because of not having the right equipment for it. Um, Millennial Mata, I'd like to see it find detailed and finished next time. Good to know. Uh, next question I'm going to ask you guys. Uh, feel free to chime in on, on what you'd like to see for next month. Um, but also, um, question I'm going to put out there. Uh, we've got a little bit of time left once I've picked these cars up. Um, so, would you rather see a Northern Pacific Alco or a Sioux Line Baldwin Diesel do interchange work? Cast your votes and uh, we'll see what we go with. So here we are bringing the cars back to the yard again. It's it's like, well, is this kind of a short run? Yes, but the real life railroad was only 1.2 miles. So it's not like, it's not like there's a whole heck of a lot of, oh, this is interesting. I don't have a run around large enough for what I want to do. So how am I going to do what I want to do? Well, I think we're going to have to leave some cars. No, 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 no. I can run around my cars. I'm good. Um, but yeah, at 1.2 miles, this isn't as... It, it is shorter than the real life thing, but not by a whole lot. And it pretty much, having looked at a, a track map, it pretty much gets the the main points in there. Um, okay, I've got a uh, vote for Northern Pacific, another vote for an Alco. Uh, I'm ignoring that comment about whichever one stays on the tracks. Um, a Baldwin and Baldwin. Okay, we've got two and two, so I need a tiebreaker. Uh, we've got Two votes for a Sioux Baldwin and two votes for a Northern Pacific Alco. So somebody's got to be the tarry breaker. Oh, forgot to throw. I thought I threw that switch. Okay. Um, Baldwin. Okay, Baldwin wins the day. So we're going to do a Sioux interchange job next. Um, because I've got about... Mm, I'd like to wrap up in about 10 minutes. I think I'm just going to leave this guy parked here. Um, and then we could switch out that flat car into the lumber mill another day. So, let us, and this is another problem with having these cars parked in the main Why I think it really is just a two-car job. So we're going to delete one of these cars just to, um, we're going to delete one of them just so we have a bit more room to work with here. Uh, I'm going to increase the radius of that switch just so that that doesn't come back to haunt us with these switches here. Now, on the Sioux end of things, um, what we're going to do, we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to um, look up 55-ton hoppers. Okay. 
So we're going to have a coal, uh, empty coal hopper ready to be picked up, and we're going to have the Sioux bring in a... Um, grain car. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. except that one's a bit too modern. Uh, but I like it bringing in a boxcar. And there's our diesel. And what else do I want to bring in? Let's just say it's one car for interchange. And I do want to... Um, that's also too modern. But they were hauling grain in boxcars in the, these days. So let's go... Do you have any other Northern Pacific? Um, I have a caboose. That's interesting. Um, okay. So we'll save the Sioux box cars for the elevator, the Northern Pacific cars for interchange. Um, so we're doing one car for interchange drop off, picking up those two and the coal hopper. Um, I should have a caboose. I don't have any Sioux cabooses. Um, so I'm going to have to substitute something in. Sure. Fictional railroad caboose. There we go. Okay. Oh, I should have started the train a little bit further back so that we come into the scene properly. Okay, so our train goes into staging, which you could see why... One doesn't necessarily need to have more than a single track because it, if you're, well, especially if you don't have the loop. If you don't have the loop, then all you're doing is bringing the train in and then bringing it back out. And you could use your hands to uh, to do your, your car replacements in between running. That said, um, because we have a loop, because the trains would need to pass, I think I'm probably going to extend the track a little bit further back and add in a few passing sidings so that it is possible to uh, um, to do that. Now, compared to the switching we did previously, this is actually going to be... Should be easier. Now, our s only looks like we have room for two cars. But that's going to be okay. Mostly. We could cheat and extend it a bit further, but when I look at it in the track plan, I think it really is only designed to fit two cars anyway. I'm tempted to do custom backdrop. I have to look at the photos to see what the area looked like to figure out what's going to be realistic. I, I, it may just be a matter of planting some fields of corn and calling it a day. We shall see. So, I think... Before I do anything with these guys here, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that this boxcar is out of the way. And I'm going to take care of my interchange first. And you'll see why in a moment. Because, yep, that's the way I want to do it. Probably should have stopped that car in case it rolls in front of the switch, but oh well. It is going to roll in front of the switch. Oh well. Okay. Uh, I should change the version of the ballast I'm using. Yeah, probably should swap that out at some point. 
Oh, actually, I didn't want to couple up to this yet, just yet. I love these, um... I will say that I do love these Trains Forge, um... Baldwins. They are really nice models. I really like the Redding version of this, which I used on the Murky Omen branch for what makes this layout great. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook up... Oh, cat number two. Say hello to Luca. We're pulling our cars for interchange out. We're going to tack them onto the caboose. Uh, then, because then they're in the right location to depart back to where we came from. And then we could just shove the Northern Pacific box car into the interchange here. And then all we have to do is swap out these cars here, run around one of them, and it's all good. Another advantage of having this curved section here, because again, the layout would ordinarily end at this point. But we're giving ourselves a little bit of extra room for what you're about to see. But I still think it's in keeping with the character of what the layout is. Uh, Moose, nickel, uh, or nickel plate. Northern Pacific had some small lads like the S4s. They did, but there's kind of a dearth of Nick Northern Pacific diesels. The one that I downloaded was an Alco RS11, as far as something that I thought looked halfway decent. Yeah, this switching feels much easier than the uh, interurban switching we were embarked on earlier. But this is why I think the layout could su sustain two operators, because technically somebody could be doing all the, the switching on this end and getting cars off to the Northern Pacific while another person is playing with the, the Sioux Line interchange. And having two interchanges, you've got this bridge traffic, you've got a lot of stuff going on in essentially a 5 by 7 space. That's pretty remarkable. Even, I keep saying it, even if you didn't do this as an interurban, I, I think the interurban is a key element of its identity. I think it's a key part of what makes it cool. But even if you take that out, it, it's still a very interesting switching layout with a, a little bit of running. But it is, let's face it, very switching biased. So we're going to take these three cars. We're going to shove them all the way out of this run around because I'm going to need that to run around the coal hopper. So we're going to... So yeah. No Sukaboos, I'm afraid. Now this is going to be a nice scene. I, I feel like... Once we detail this up, we had some grass, we had some field. This is going to be quite pretty. Oops. Uh, hopefully that doesn't matter. It doesn't. Good. All right. So, we've got our cars out of the way here. So now all we have to do is we need to switch the box car with the hopper. Uh, to spot the box car, run around the hopper, put it on the train, and then we'll be set to go back to the interchange. And that will be us done for the evening but you see very small layout a lot of operating potential easily enough for two crews um insofar as having one crew doing the the interchange and the other doing the vcs and i because you figure if when we were doing this side of the switching um there could have been a crew on the other end doing the Northern Pacific interchange. And even with the... Because you don't have a lot of walking room in here. It is tight. 
But I think that you could fit two people who are functioning as two separate crews. It's not like you need a dispatcher or anything of that sort. Okay, we'll get ourselves... Get this... Uh, actually, I'll save myself a move if I pull further ahead and then just put that on the siding there. So in operating, so I think there, there's three things in terms of the, the three things that make this layout great. Number one, the fact that it's an inner urban and it's a switching inner urban. Uh, you could have a simple passenger run from one part and one end of the line to the other. You could do all sorts of freight switching. There's a lot going on with that. Uh, the fact that you have these two ends of the room where one person could be doing interchange work and the other person could be doing... Um, running the inner urban. Uh, and then I think the other thing that I would add as far as something that I really like is, um, I'm inclined to say the variety of industries, which admittedly isn't the most distinct element. Um, but I think just the fact that it, it lends itself to expansion, it'd be very easy. I, I mean, that's what we've done here with this little bit of curve. Uh, but it'd be very easy to expand any of these sections and make it into something larger. Oh, I don't mean to take the whole train with me. I just need the boxcar. Thank you. And hopefully I remain clear of that switch so we can get that closed up. And I did. So, all we have to do is spot this car uh, for being loaded with grain. Then we'll come back, we'll grab the hopper, grab the rest of the train, take off. So, what did you guys think of this uh, as we're wrapping up here? What, what did you think of this layout? Was this an interesting build? Did you enjoy seeing the evolution of it from nothing to something? feedback I, I i love hearing your feedback and knowing what you you think of the show and, and think of these projects that we're choosing this is one that i've wanted to do oh since march but i think february was actually when i reached out to um when i initially reached out to p wiser to to make the interurbans so i've, I've been wanting to do it for a while i'm really this has a, been a fun build. Uh, Badimus, good to see you doing train some stuff again, Nick. Nice build. Glad you liked it, Badimus. Uh, Parrot, Nick, are you in the Trainsforge Discord? I am, yes. I am a member of that. So I like seeing the, the projects and people sharing details about their fictional railroads because there's you guys at Trainsforge have quite... Quite a few different fictional railroads. So yes. Today we were efficient with our switchy moves. And that's always a good day. Uh, Millennial Modeler. One of my layout interchanges is with uh, Pensy. and can only do three cars. I've wondered if that was a bit unrealistically low. But this layout has alleviated my concerns. The two car interchange is reasonable. Um... I, and I enjoyed this layout a lot. Good. Well, I, I'm glad that you you got to see a concept demonstrated and that helped you out with your design. I think that a two-car interchange is reasonable. Again, it's not about the length of the train. It's about how many moves are required to do the switching that you want to do. And sometimes you want to extend that play by having more moves. So yeah, a Pensy interchange with two cars in real life would feel maybe a bit small. But this is your layout. This is this is scaling the operations accordingly. And I think that if if you make it feel, if you give it the the feel that you want, two cars is plenty. Time to take off out of town.
can actually watch the train disappear as it goes by the bridge here. So next time, we'll see. We'll see. If, if you guys are interested in having uh, VCS and I come back for the super detailing and for another run through, then we'll do that. And then next time, we'll do some more switching, then we'll do the Northern Pacific Interchange. We could definitely make that happen. Now our train disappears out of the world. And that will conclude tonight's stream. So we'll take one last look at what we've built tonight. So we have the Valley City Street in Inner Urban, based in Valley City, North Dakota, as it was from the teens to the 50s as an interurban line. Something that, while doesn't give you the longest run with the interurban itself, it's a point-to-point. -point. It gives you a lot to do with that interurban. You get two uh, functioning railroads. Uh, you've got, uh, as a loop, you can have passenger trains making cameos. You can have freight trains making cameos. So you can have stuff going on, looping around the outside while you're... Hmm. Excuse me, while you're playing with the interurban... This is a really, this is a really neat design, and I think that even if one weren't to do it um, verbatim, hopefully you, you've taken some lessons away from this and learned something. Uh, Millennium Modeler, what railroad is on the high bridge? That is the Northern Pacific High Line. So the low line, uh, the original main line, aka the low line, went through town. That's this bit through uh, Valley City here with the station, and then uh, later they built the High Line, which is this. Uh, huge trestle and the trestle still exists today in fact the empire builder uses it um amtrak's empire builder and so that um that went right over the the interurban line so that is a, a realistic depiction oh that would probably be the third thing so the three things that make this layout great the fact that it's an interurban and it makes the most of it being an interurban two interchanges and allowing crews to switch roles and having a cameo appearance by uh this trestle that gives this sense of scale and gives this sense of uh extension of the world those are probably the three big highlights to it so we'll see if we continue building this next week or if we want to do something new let me know in the comments thank you guys for tuning in tonight i hope you've enjoyed playing along or watching and giving your feedback and commentary it's always great to do these shows uh, I want to thank Jointed Rail for sponsoring today's episode. Again, check out their content at jointedrail.com. And if you like what I do here on YouTube, if you like what makes this layout great and Great Train Layouts Live, head on over to patreon.com slash the roundhouse for $5 a month. You're getting early access to both what makes this layout great and the roundhouse podcast. And even if you're not able to afford that, just sharing this show with people and letting them know, hey, we're, we're doing something kind of fun and kind of different here. Uh, every every third or fourth th Thursday of the month, I know I've been fluid about that, but you guys uh, are awesome, and I appreciate you being along for the ride. Have a great rest of your night for those who are watching live or rest of your day for those who are not. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time.